Okay, well, we're talking here with Fatima Parker, who uh, you are speaking right now from the UK, right? Yes, I'm speaking to you from London. Okay, from London. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> how how about if you tell us a little bit about uh, yourself? And I know that you you are right now in London, but you also are uh, you live and work also in the Middle East, correct? Yes, yes. At the moment, I'm uh, in the UK, um, but uh, I uh, travel as well to Dubai. Uh, it's in the United Arab Emirates, uh, which is uh, in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so, I mean, you have uh, sometimes a difference in weather. In the UK, it's very cold, and you go to the Middle East, it's quite hot. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that must yes. be a challenge to adjust to sometimes. Uh, it is. It is, but um, one gets used to, uh, to to just the change of weather, mm-hmm. um, and uh, the cause I, that I do it for is uh, make it makes it worthwhile. And actually. tell us about the cause. <laughs> um, I look after, um, uh, let's say, if we want to call them or us fat people, uh-huh. uh, and try and and. Um, help the people um, in other parts of the world where the message of size acceptance and health at every size uh, is not reaching. Okay. Uh, and when the idea gets there, it is not understood. Um, I've been doing this for about 10 years now, and still um, people misunderstand and they believe that, uh, um, you know, p- apart from believing that thin is best, and thin is healthy, they believe that size acceptance means uh, glorifying fat and encouraging people to get fat and obese and uh, and healthy. Mm-hmm. That makes uh, our message a bit difficult because um, they don't give us a chance or they don't give me a chance to, to try and reach as many people as I can because they believe that I'm maybe we are advising people the wrong way or giving them the wrong idea mm-hmm. about that- health. Yes, I think in, in in the U.S. too, I've seen that uh, happen mm-hmm. often. People will uh, misunderstand, you know, and and think that the fat acceptance movement and health at every size, you know, are encouraging people, all people, to get fat, you know, and yes. whereas really what we're saying is that if you are fat. Uh, you know, uh, you know, then accept that. That you know, if that's yeah. your natural size, that's what we're encouraging. If you're naturally thin, we encourage you to accept that. We would no more encourage someone to get fat to meet some external idea than we would someone. You know, we would encourage someone to get thin. Of course. Um, well, so so um, you, uh, how did you get involved in this work, and and, and how exactly are you? Um, promoting size acceptance. Um, I mean, it is. I feel that it is a duty of uh, of uh, all of us who are plus size, really, mm-hmm. to 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 do something about it. To at least uh, just spread the the message and and uh, try to help others. Um, I um, I've always believed. In, in health at every size. I've always believed that what is, um, what is said about uh, fat people as being dirty, lazy, uh, <laughs> overeating, um, and intelligent, um, ugly, and so on, uh, that wasn't true because um, I can see it from other people who are fat and can see it from myself. Mm-hmm. But because we, are, we get all this, um, you know, we, we are bashed and we are told this uh, day in, day out. So we start to maybe say, they must be right if everyone is saying this, you know, the doctors, the television, the media, everywhere. So, um, I, but I just had those ideas myself until I got on, to, on the Internet and uh, I started reading sites. You know, I think it was the NAFA site. Uh, uh, yes, and <laughs> yeah, and then I I, I read as well the um, 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 Deb Burgard site, you know, yeah. um, oh. body positive, mm-hmm. and I thought, oh my goodness, you know, the, some some uh, some other people think the same way, you know, the, this I felt like uh, there was uh, this is a home from home for me, you know, people ha- have the same philosophy and they feel the same way and they have the same. 
ideas. And so I was really happy and I was empowered to every time I read these. And through other people I met, um, Alan Stedham from uh, uh, the International Science Acceptance Association. And, and then we are you started an author? To... And that, excuse me for interrupting you. I'm sorry. Oh, but I'm sorry. <laughs> are you an Please author? do interrupt me. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I am. Um, I mean, as I said, I started working with Alan uh, in um, 2001, and uh, I uh, thought of um, having a branch in the Middle East because I was uh, I was in Dubai at that time working for yeah. television because I'm a journalist and a broadcaster. Okay, um, that, that was the other question I was going to have. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So, so I, I just uh, liked the idea, and I thought this is this is a mission, and th- that idea I've already had in my head, and now it's been uh, made official uh, that uh, what I, what I was thinking um, about was right. Other people there, there's a, uh, this message is somewhere else, and it was so well explained and well written in, in um, the sites I've mentioned, uh, that um, I was so happy. And when Alan offered this, I, I, um, I took it up and I started to um, just spread the word, be, being a journalist, uh, by contacting the media in the Middle East, mm-hmm. by um, going on television and uh, in the newspapers, writing articles, talking to people. Uh, I find a lot of acceptance from from the, the people, uh-huh. but uh, I find it hard with with you know like television management uh, and um, uh, with with people in authority like the um, hospitals or the yeah. doctors and, and things like that. And you know it's interesting you should say that because I was just thinking I, I was I was going to ask you uh, and remark that it seemed kind of surprising to me and perhaps my, these are my own misconceptions uh, but I was a little surprised to hear that in the that the Middle East was less shall we say or, or maybe I should say as unaccepting you know, of uh, fat people and fat women whatever as you know other parts of the world like the westernized you know the U.S. and and the, mm-hmm. increasingly the uh, the United Kingdom, but uh, if I understood you um, correctly, there it is the 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 people in general in the Middle East. It sounds like are more understanding and accepting of size diversity, uh, and it, perhaps it is those in authority who I and and the medical profession. And I find myself wondering if those aren't perhaps more Westernized, and that may be part of the problem. Um, when I say the people understand, it means uh, I mean the you know the, the the people who watch my the, the watch the programs I go on. Okay. When they meet me in malls or in the street, uh-huh. they come and thank me. They say thank you very much. You gave us hope uh-huh. because the message is thin is best. Mm-hmm. About thirty forty years ago in the Middle East, the woman who was fat was the beautiful woman, was the one who got married first, mm-hmm. was the woman who came from a uh, rich family. You see, you see, she didn't do much work. She wasn't um, um, a servant or anything. She was the the daughter of the merchant. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, they were, I mean, fat women were appreciated and loved. Mm-hmm. But with uh, the changing in time and fashion and so on, the um, thin is getting more and more the, to be the sign of beauty. Oh. And, uh, and it is getting really worse. Now it is not only slim, but it's skinny. Well, I, I was going to ask, yeah, how is that affecting people? You know, v- now, very bad. about eating disorders. Oh, a lot, a lot of eating disorders, a lot of anorexia, a lot of um, a mental uh, health problems, especially with teenagers. Mm-hmm. Uh, self-cutting, body-hating, dysmorphia, you know, body dysmorphia, yes. um, all sorts of, um, you know, uh, uh, plastic surgery to, to have Angelina Jolie's lips. Um, and uh, it, it is, it, it's really very sad. And um, all of that it, is, it, it's been happening over the past few decades, it sounds like. It's uh, it is hap- it has um, have now since about three or four years it's become very major. Really, even over yeah, the past three or four years. What, what uh, the, the the thin the the very you know like yeah. because things take a little bit longer to get there. 
Uh-huh. Uh, they come from America. They go into into here in the, in Europe, and then they spread around the world. Mm-hmm. You see, um, so in, in the Middle East, the thinness. Yes. The, the skinny, skinny is now, which is, it's very, um, it's very popular to be skinny. Although they've noticed, because I go on television a lot, or, you know, uh, I, I have to invent things. I have to get ideas. I've, I want, uh, by the way, to thank everyone from uh, the um, uh, Size Acceptance and Health at Every Size group that uh, have sent me books uh, and information and, and uh, support uh, with with information and everything, because every time I get an idea, I have to go to the media and try and say, let's talk about this, because yeah. I'm the only voice of size acceptance. All the other programs the that they have, <laughs> sorry, oh, the only voice of size acceptance there in the in, in 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 the Middle East, yes. Oh my gosh. Yes, the only voice. Um, so people know me. They say, but how can we accept ourselves? And and um, society hates us. Uh, and we are not represented on television, and we go to the doctor, and he sends us back home uh, crying uh, and with a diet sheet. Oh, no. Yeah, they say when you go on television, we see you, we have uh, self-confidence, we start to exercise and love our bodies as we are. As soon as you, you know, we don't see you for a week or two weeks or something, other programs come in, and we get depressed, and we yeah. give up. Well, what do you tell them when they... When, when they come to you with that? I just say, don't give up. Yeah. I say, don't give up. Don't give up. It's your health. Um, I say, love your body, care for your body, and uh, you're beautiful. Um, I've written articles actually about this. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but there are a lot of pressures because of culture uh, in, in the um, Islamic culture, like uh, the husband can marry um, more than one woman. Yes. Mm-hmm. So if one is sad, you know, uh, he, he would leave her and marry uh, someone else who is thinner. Okay. And I have examples of this in case of a woman from Saudi Arabia who uh, died, you know, because she was trying to lose weight oh. uh, by taking, um, I mean, many, many. I have lots of stories, but this one. Uh, the, the the husband kept, uh, you know, pestering her all the time. If you don't lose weight, I'm going to get a new wife. If you don't lose weight, I'm going to get another woman. So the poor girl was um, depressed, and she was she tried everything, and finally she was taking herbs, and she uh, I think overdosed or something unknowingly, and she died. Oh. She left two little toddlers. Oh no. Oh, no. Yeah, and the, of course the man married someone else, and he's happy. Well, and and we know, of course. I mean, you and I know, and those of us who are who are more aware of the truth, the reality in terms mm. of of uh, some of the the uh, misinformation about weight and health and and eating disorders. We know that eating disorders are deadly. You know, yes. and that and, and that. Uh, and I'm, I'm please. I, I just realized I'm not saying that the woman who died there had an eating disorder, but we also know that the things that you and I know, you know, that the the things that many people, you know, largely women, but some men too, you know, do to lose weight and oftentimes are encouraged to do or even prescribed yes. to do by, you know, physicians or other things are actually dangerous, you know, are actually bad for their health. Yes. Part of I mean, Peggy. I, I sometimes. I mean, I don't want to watch the the, the uh, health programs in the Middle East, really, because I get so frustrated yeah. uh, and I get so upset. Because here you are. This woman comes in and tells the girls, "You should not eat more than a thousand calories a day, oh and you have to exercise, lose weight." And they have programs called the diet uh, uh, programs. Um, they, I mean, yesterday I was watching a program here in the UK. This lady, Fern Britton, lost a lot of weight by using a, a band, and and they may, they're making her into a superstar. They're parading her everywhere. Look at what she's done. She's lost a lot of weight. It's it's glamorizing thinness that is killing people. Absolutely, and, and glamorizing the, the the some of the the uh, strategies, whether it's yes. surgery or drugs or herbs or or starvation or exercise or whatever the things that people do in order to uh, alter or try to alter their 
shape to meet yes. some external ideal. You know, when uh, it's so sad when I you know think of. I mean, from many perspectives, you know, just but just that the you know we were born original beings and yes. <laughs> and, and here we are trying to you know, to turn ourselves into copies of you know whether it's Angelina Jolie as you say. It is true. It is true. It's because uh, I mean I can see it now and because there is. Um, a big uh, like in the Arab media, you have the Egyptian media mm-hmm. and the Lebanese media. Mm-hmm. Uh, Egyptians were into cinema for a long time, so you had these actresses who were plump; okay. they were not uh, thin. Uh, and the Egyptian woman was a round woman, you know, she wasn't uh, a stick thin. But the Lebanese woman uh, always follows fashion, and she was very thin. But now when I watch uh, Egyptian television, I see these women are getting thinner and thinner. So <laughs> I can't believe it. It's because um, being fat or round or not thin uh, is uh, a sign of um, uh, not only n- not being beautiful, but as well being, you know, backwards and, and, um, and trendy. Yes, yeah. It yeah. reminds me, I mean, some of the things you said earlier about the uh, the negative aspects that are Mm-hmm. Uh, have been attributed to fat people, you know, um, yeah. reminds me of it, as I'm sure you're you know, aware of, but I'll say for some of our listeners, in, in, you know, in case they're not aware, that um, those sort of, you know, think about those adjectives. You know, the, those are the same types of uh, phrases and words and concepts that are applied to any oppressed minority or marginalized um, mm-hmm. well, I was going to say minority, but of course, in this, this case, when, at least in America, we are the majority. Yeah, you know, we're the majority. <laughs> <laughs> even in the Middle East, even in the UK, it seems everywhere. Uh-huh. Uh huh. We have members from Israel as well. Even in Israel, it it seems like forty nine percent, I think, uh, are uh, are large. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, now, so so you you are speaking out and on. Um, Oh, on television, is that right? And, and yes. And um, and uh, in print, you are writing articles and broadcasting programs. Yes. Now, do you do your own reporting? Are you a, a like a television reporter, or how would I describe? Um, I've been working for the BBC World Service for many years. Oh, okay. Uh, gotcha. As a freelance um, a freelance reporter, and I was broadcasting. I had my own. Uh, programs, uh, but it was mainly radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, but funny enough, I uh, now uh, that I, uh, I go on television to talk about size acceptance, mm-hmm. um, I'm the biggest one on television <laughs> because yeah. everyone you see the presenter and everyone I've, I stick in. Yes. And here I am, a BBW or mm-hmm. <laughs> super size woman. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's but. Um, uh, if uh, I, I wanted to get a job on television, I don't think I would have a chance to um, to, to, to have my own show because of uh, thin is bad. Or, yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And the same could well happen in the U.S. You know, today, which is sad. Um, increasingly, yeah, it seems like it seems like most of the. It's interesting to me. I've noticed. I actually don't watch very much. Uh, Television are very much you know news here in the the u s but um when I do uh it seems to me, and this may be my own biases, but that uh while there may be a, some variability in the male you know reporters and uh anchors or whatever in terms of body type and age and things like that, that so many of the women often seem to be of the same mold, you know, yes thin blonde. Young, <laughs> it's getting the same way in the UK, in, in the in the UK and and, and in the Middle East. Yeah. Uh, all these um, news readers, uh, uh, television program presenters, they're all very thin and young. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when you some some men, you know, uh, important uh, journalists and, and uh, presenters uh, are. Um, I mean, one of them is almost uh, 450 pounds. Mm-hmm. And no one sees anything wrong in that. Mm-hmm. And good for him, you know. Yes. <laughs> Let's apply that to women as well. <laughs> yeah, they they won't. Yeah. They will not. The, the double standard is. Yes, what that's it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, what what um, okay? So you're doing 
uh, you're helping to get the message out and, and hopefully giving a kind of you're the voice of size acceptance, and I would see, it, see yourself as probably a beacon of size acceptance and hope, you know, for people, uh, fat people especially, in the yes. Middle East. Um, mm-hmm. are, and, and you mentioned the International Size Acceptance Association. I'm wondering, are there any organizations like that that are, or similar to NAFA the Nas- in America, the National Association to Advance Fat Acceptance, are there any organizations or things like that similar in the Middle East that people um, can come together uh, uh, in or, or with? Um, you mean like NASA? Yes. Uh-huh. Um, as far as I am, I mean, I've been doing this for almost 10 years mm-hmm. uh, because, I, as I said to you, I was thinking about it before I joined uh, um, uh, International Size Acceptance Association. Uh, and I have not... Um, met or heard of of a, an official organization uh, that is size accepting yeah. there are I've, lately i've heard of um a, a group of doctors who say in egypt they say that they follow the um, health at every size paradigm mm-hmm. but when i looked at their website they um they just um, i mean <laughs> to me they they seem to be saying, okay, we're going to help you lose the fat without the diet, you know, yeah. maybe, but still lose the fat, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I think yeah. I remember when you shared, I think I remember you yeah. sharing that uh, website with some of us on online. Yes, you know, I, I think they contacted uh, Dr. Le, Linda Bacon as well. Mm-hmm. And, and, and yeah. it seems like you, you can see that in the U.S. too, which you probably have, and mm-hmm. you know, too, but, but sometimes that some people, some professionals, some companies that will present themselves they'll, they'll use the language you know of health at every size or or whatever uh, um, and I think they're just trying to reach out you know to people mm-hmm. in the community but they don't really they either actually don't really understand what it's really about in terms of accepting uh, yeah. oneself and not dieting or uh, to put it bluntly I think they're just kind of they're trying to exploit, <laughs> yeah, the of course, population and just yes, yeah, of course, you know, yes, but uh, they, they're trying to do that, yeah. You know. But uh, as far as um, NAFA uh, and health at every size are concerned, I think when I go on my television programs, I try and cover the activities. And mm-hmm. I talked about uh, uh, Linda Bacon's research, you know, the, her um, health at every size study. Absolutely. Uh, I know she's got a new book out now called. Health. Yes, yes. Uh, she sent me a copy and I'll be talking about that as well oh, great. Uh, when I go there next week. Um, and, uh, you know, Kelly Bliss's work um, mm-hmm. and, and many, you know, um, all the colleagues, uh, my friends from uh, uh, Size Acceptance who sent me uh, their work, I try and talk about that. And then reading the, um, all, all the, because I'm part of uh, different uh, groups online. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, yes. So I, I, whenever I get important information, uh, I try and um, and explain it in Arabic to oh. um, uh, you know to 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 the the populations there because the television programs I go on uh, are important. You know, I've been on um, Al Jazeera, which is uh-huh. a hard program to go on, but still I um, managed to. Um, Get invited to talk about it, but still, they, they, they get uh, they get dietitians and doctors to come and and discredit me. I know. I'm, I, yeah. I mean, I'm saying that not about you specifically, but I've seen that happen here in, mm-hmm. in the U.S. and and um, and I can tell you, as you know, I'm a licensed health professional. I'm a you know clinical psychologist, so my yeah. area is not you know medicine, but I'm a health service provider. I'm licensed. I'm trained and. In many respects, and I can tell you that you know some of the people that they get in, some of the whether it's dietitians or physicians who they they bring in to discredit people, don't yeah. know what they're talking about. No, they don't. You know, oh, they it's don't. So, it, it's, I would say it's sad, but it's like, you know, I vacillate between it's being sad and and it's being maddening. You know, it it, um, it is true. It is true because I was on the BBC. Uh, Africa service, and they had three doctors trying to discredit me oh. by telling me um, uh, about 60% of Africans were obese. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. 
<laughs> well, you know, it just crossed my mind. I was thinking, wow, you must be a pretty powerful woman there. They took three doctors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they brought in three doctors to try to discredit you. <laughs> yeah, you see, uh, Peggy, when I when I am on these programs, I'm just fighting for my life, you know. Yeah. Um, and then I'm the biggest in the studio, so they have to sit and listen. <laughs> <laughs> and I can understand what you're saying about you being the biggest in, in the studio because as yes. a fat person, you know, yes. and, you know I myself you know, am, am fat and, and I sometimes when I am in a situation where I'm talking about, I haven't been on in, um, television as much as you have, but times when, whether it's in person or, or in writing or whatever, have been talking about you know, size acceptance or fat acceptance, even though I have the, the training and the background and the, the Ph.D. and all this sort of stuff. Of I still get the sense sometimes that people are going, like, oh, yeah, you're just making that, you know, you're just trying to justify your own, you know, blah, blah, blah. So you get discredited simply because of yes. your own body type, which to me, again, is is maddening. It's as if, as if you know, Try telling, which of course probably did happen, try telling somebody who's African American that they can't talk about, you know, discrimination against African Americans. It is true. <laughs> because yeah. they're just trying to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, on the last program I was on was on the, on, um, the arrival of Al Jazeera, it's a mm-hmm. channel called El Arabiya. We will put a, a copy of it on the site. Um, and I, I had to call many people, and amongst them Marilyn Wall. <laughs> I'd like to uh, like thank her to, to give me courage. I said, I'm going to face up to face this man. He's uh, the presenter of the show. He lost half his weight, and now he's going to try and humiliate me in public to say, I've done it, why didn't you? Mm-hmm. Why can't you? And oh. it apparently, you know, the show, I've seen it, but people came back and said that was a very strong program because he kept... Uh, coming back to me, so now you were, you were fighting for size acceptance because you were a failure, aren't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I, I admire you so much, and also Marilyn Wan, who you mentioned about yes. seen on TV, and, and many others, Kelly Bliss, yeah, you know, Ke- who, yes. who, who, yeah. who have been able to uh, quite reasonably, when I'm assuming you, although I didn't see you respond to this guy, but you know, reasonably and whatever, you know, respond to this sort of, you know, provoking nonsense, you know, yes. uh, be, because I have to confess that sometimes I think I, I don't think I could be in the same room or on the same television program with someone like that because I would, I would either want to throttle them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or, or just say, I'm not going to talk to you. You're an idiot. This <laughs> is not going to be a very professional. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. No, I mean that program made a big buzz on the internet. I mean Fatima Parker's name is all over the yeah, oh. uh, Google in Arabic. Uh-huh. <laughs> because <laughs> I said to him, I said, uh, I said, um, I'd like to congratulate you. Not for losing weight, but for losing half your body because you found um, you, you're, that you were having maybe a wrong lifestyle and you, you've um, corrected this lifestyle. And so as, as a side effect, you've lost weight, mm-hmm. but you've improved your health, hopefully, I said. Well, but the thing is, you have dedicated the book to the, <laughs> to the scale, but in our philosophy in size acceptance, we break the scale because we don't want to be the slave of the scale. Yeah, and and the sad truth is we don't know if someone who's, who's lost half their body weight. I mean, they have lost. Um, odds are they've lost not only fat tissue, but they've yes. lost lean muscle tissue, as you well know, including yes, quite likely uh, organ tissue. This yes. man may have lost part of his heart and his liver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I just laugh. I end, <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm I, 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 end, you know. I just wanted to uh, tell him that I, I, I am not impressed by you losing weight. Yeah. Uh, uh, just it's great that you've changed your lifestyle, mm-hmm. and I hope meaning that uh, maybe he hasn't, you know, maybe he just starved himself or yeah. Or had weight loss surgery or something. Or yeah, as you said, sometimes you know we people might assume that someone who loses weight has changed their lifestyle in a yeah. healthy manner, but that may not be the case. They may have done things very unhealthy in order. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. Because he kept asking me. He says, "So you mean that if you are depressed, you overeat?" I said, "Yes." Oh. 
<laughs> you I, I, overeat and then you get stressed and, and you develop eating disorders. Mm-hmm. Um, so he came back. Every time he keeps going back. So, so why didn't you lose weight then? <laughs> Every, okay. You know, we talk and then he comes and attacks me. I say, I have many times and I put it back on again. He said, why did you put it back on again? <laughs> I said, oh, do you have three hours? So I explained the mechanism of dieting and why it doesn't work. Exactly. Yo yo with yeah. constant regain and the body's fighting to maintain its <laughs> its, its natural homeostasis yeah. and all of that. And I I can tell you as a psychologist and a psychotherapist that what the thing yeah. particularly maddening for me is to I seem to keep using that word today for uh, maddening, but you know, is when people attribute uh so many psychological uh quote causes to uh you know you know fatness and and is assuming that you know that being fat means someone has emotional issues and blah 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 and that they're causing their weight et cetera and which i there there is no you know uh truth you know behind that i mean yeah, as I'm sure you know, but yes speaking yeah. to some you know listeners, yes, yeah, some fat fat people have emotional issues. Just like some thin people do, <laughs> you know, but that <laughs> doesn't course. necessarily mean that they're causing, you know, their problems. And whether someone eats or quote overeats or not, mm. um, however that gets manifested in their body in terms of their weight is going to be uh, depend upon many, many causes or you know uh, many reasons and. and and probably genetics being uh, the most important one. But I, I know I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> as we no, say, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. Uh, I, I have been, uh, as I said to you, on, on so many um, programs, and, I, and I've been to see the um, many people who are in authority about health to explain about health at every size, and they think um, it's funny. They come to me and say, oh, but we like fat people, you know, we like fat people. I said, I, I didn't come here to get your, your sympathy. I, I'm just trying to uh, explain to you that uh, pushing these diets is harmful, is harmful. I said, listen to, to me and try and, and learn, you know, these new things. And, and you, because I said it in, in the UK as well, uh, and in one of the articles, I just say, Would you, do you want a healthy nation or uh, a thin nation at any price? Exactly, and 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 so many people m- confuse the two and think that thinness equals you know health, and it, that's mm-hmm. not any you know that that's no more true than <laughs> it uh, is true. It equals health and it equals beauty. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was on one, another program as well with uh, Miss Lebanon, you know, one of the beauties of Lebanon, and uh, she was with me on the program. And the presenter kept telling me, so, Mrs. Parker, do you think that you are more beautiful than, um, I think her name was um, Nicole or something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I said, why not? She has her type and I have my type. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I said, yes. And, 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 yes. And, and, and also, I mean, why are we comparing ourselves? Yeah, because people? they want to put you down. They want yeah. to, uh, to make you feel inferior. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, yeah. You're fat and you have to be inferior. Oh, it's sad. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm here to mm-hmm. say no. <laughs> to that. <laughs> me, and you're here to say too. no to that, too, right? <laughs> yeah, me too. And, then, and uh, the, th- the good thing is I meet people then after the shows or people write in and just uh, say uh, thank you very much. You know we've never heard anything positive about uh, just being fat. You know uh, we've always thought that uh, we the, the, we were wrong and we are bad. And I, I had so many people really writing. One of them said, "Oh, after the program, I went and tore my diet sheet and uh, went back to eating <laughs> and having fun." So I wrote to him. I said, "Great that you tore your diet sheet, but you have to." Look after your health. Don't diet, but just wa- watch your health. You know, or just eat what uh, when you're hungry. Eat what makes you happy, and look after your body. Yeah, Don't uh, binge or, or get into a, um, an unhealthy lifestyle. Yes, yes. Well, I I I thank you on behalf of <laughs> the fat people in the world for, <laughs> for thank you and all of us. I think I, you know I was going to thank you for what you're doing in the in the Middle East, but but you know I think that that this affects 
us, not only, you know, fat people, but all of us, you know, yes. all people, because um, as I'm sure you're aware, but it, it, it certainly, well, I, I would assume this is similar in the Middle East, but here in America, even people who most uh, folks would not consider them fat, women mm-hmm. in particular, that you know, that tend to get, that they internalize these messages, and they yeah. you know, do unhealthy things to try to still to, to lose weight or to try not to gain weight or, or just... Uh, it, you know, feeling ashamed about their bodies, you know, uh, as a as a whole, which is unhealthy, uh, you know, for them and um, and uh, you know, men and 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 children and you know mm-hmm. all of us get affected by these yes. uh, this, uh, messages that, and in my opinion too, they just you know, reinforce a uh, a sad um, emphasis on trying to meet. A standard that is uh, external to you and to whatever your, you know, um, whatever is right and true for you, you know, and, and your body, and instead trying to meet what somebody else says, you know, you should be or what you should do, which whether we're talking about weight or or, or health or anything else, I think yes. is a is a problematic. Um, it it is it is true it is even here in the UK I mean, every time I go to my doctor he puts uh, everything on the dieting or, uh, or or on the on the weight mm-hmm. um, so I, I I'm there I, I think I'm the only patient who, who gives a lecture to the doctor I keep uh-huh. trying to <laughs> explain and say um, please you know uh, try and, and look at me as a, as a, a whole person not as a fat person go, look beyond the fat and, and give me a chance to be diagnosed as a thin person to, mm-hmm. to look at it I said because we have many cases of people who who have diseases or, or because you tell them you are that um, that symptom is due to your weight so go and lose weight and come back and you ignore uh, diseases that uh, might be um, the sign or that uh, that symptom is uh, pointing um, at, you see, exactly. uh, like plantar fasciitis, for example, or uh, uh, so some people um, uh, get diagnosed with osteoarthritis, but actually it is their plantar fasciitis that is causing it. And when you go to be treated for plantar fasciitis, they tell you it's due to your weight, which is not always true. Exactly, exactly. If they correct the mechanism of your feet and you can walk properly, mm-hmm. then you won't have that pain and you won't get the knee pain. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, uh, and uh, you know, I'm, I've heard many other examples, which I'm sure you have too. There have even been uh, you know, people who have had abdominal tumors and have told them, yes. this is, you know, oh, you know what, just go, go lose weight, follow this diet, you know. That's you know that's the problem, but you know their weight gain <laughs> was related to them having a tumor. You know, yes, they or, can't or believe that the distension in your abdomen is due to something uh, else, but uh, mm-hmm. not fat. They yeah. see you fat, they judge you as fat, and that's dangerous. That's why yeah. I, I. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I was just going to say. I think that that's one of the ways in which this um, uh, problematic emphasis upon weight. You know. And uh, some of the misconceptions about weight and health and the misinformation, I think that that negatively affects, again, all people, whether you're thin or fat. If someone who is thin and then mm-hmm. gains weight because of some medical problem, then they, too, run the mm-hmm. risk of being misdiagnosed or, or their true cause of, of their problems being ignored and instead the, you know, they're told, oh, quit eating so much, you know. <laughs> it, yes, yeah. it is true, and and it's depressing. It is. It's yeah. really depressing because uh, um, you are in pain, you don't know how to deal with it, or you you just say, because you've, if you're fat and they tell you you're, the cause of your pain is fat, mm-hmm. and lose weight, it is not news to you. You've already tried exactly everything to lose weight, so you, you just get frustrated because you know that you're not going to get rid of that pain, or you're not going to be properly diagnosed, and that you're not being uh, you're not being heard and listened to. Yes, as a, uh, in respect for yourself as a human being. You know, yes, and, uh, and your experience is not being validated. Instead, that you know your experience and what you're saying is being discounted, and it instead is saying like I, you know you must not have 
you know, I can't believe that you don't know that you're fat. <laughs> and that, and that <laughs> you, need to, you just need to, that there's a problem with that, and you just need to change what you're eating, you know, or how much you're exercising, and you'll lose weight, you know. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, to, yeah. to, to think that people who have been fat, and and I was going to say this culture, I'm thinking of America, but even in the Middle East now with, with all that's going on, to think that they don't know that <laughs> and haven't tried. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. it, it is true. I mean, there, uh, the, the problem as well, it's uh, w- with all the um, uh, commercial, uh, you know, the, the um, commercializing of everything. You have uh, all these uh, food shops in every corner mm-hmm. uh, and glamorizing all these um, foods, you know, um, oh, yeah. uh, junk food. It's, uh, it's, it's a, a very mixed message, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you yes. In America, I don't know about the Middle East, but in America you see it, uh, the mixed messages so uh, obvious on the covers of women's magagazines. Yeah. there are all sorts of um, uh, stories and headlines about losing weight, and then you'll also see all this pictures of food and great recipes and, you know et cetera and like you know. Um, and again, but there's not that I think there's anything inherently wrong with food. <laughs> I think it's great to enjoy good food and eating. Of course. But, but you know that they're giving people these. Uh, uh, in, in psychology, we call them double bind messages. Mm-hmm. They're kind of like you yes. can't win. You know? Yes, and and they are literally crazy making. <laughs> of course, of course, because yeah. it's the same. I have um, mothers come crying to me to say, "I don't know what to feed my son. They only want to buy food from outside." Mm-hmm. They only want to go to to the ready, you know, fast food, and they they wouldn't want to eat at home. Some of the rich women say we bring in chefs and we make them cook the same thing as it's outside, but there's still uh, the attraction of the food coming from outside is a lot better. Yeah, yeah. and and they wouldn't eat uh, home, you know, home um, home homemade home cooking and and so on. So, so there are. I, I, we have a lot to do, and we shouldn't give up. We shouldn't. You see, we talked about health. And um, I, I went to hospital with uh, anemia, and they told me, "No, no, you're fat. You go home." If I hadn't insisted, I would have died. You see, I'm sure there are many fat people who have, or other people who are a little bit big and have uh, health problems. And if they tell them that, uh, you know, go home, they they kill them. Yes, because yeah. they don't diagnose them properly, uh, like uh, having B12 deficiency, pernicious anemia, you're tired all the time. Mm-hmm. But being fat, you're told that you're lazy. So if you feel tired all, t- all the time, you feel guilty and you say, I'm tired because I'm fat. If you are uh, sh- uh, out of breath, you say, I'm out of breath because I'm fat. I need to go and, and you know, I'm, I'm not in shape. Mm-hmm. But the, you don't you don't think that there is probably something you know a disease that is causing it. And when you go to the doctor, they say no, no, it's because you're fat. Go and exercise, and and uh, which is not fair. Mm-hmm. Which is yeah. not fair. Give a chance to people. Diagnose us properly, and then if it's due to a lack of exercise or a, a wrong diet, slowly, lovingly, just teach us without having to bash us and make us feel like. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, unwanted and and um, worthless people. Absolutely, and I, I, that holds for the U.S. or the Middle East, anywhere in the world. I think. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, Fatima, thank you so much for talking You're uh, with yeah. us today. Um, You're welcome. It was my pleasure. I hope, to, I hope to be able to check back with you uh, maybe at another time. And, and of course, uh, anytime. I hope I'll hear um, that the situation is improving. <laughs> yes, but, uh, I uh, hope uh, hope that uh, NAFA, uh, the International Size Acceptance Association, the Health at Every Size, you guys should, you are our um, uh, beacon, you are our inspiration, and you should go get stronger and work more and carry on in what you're doing. So, uh, to to because without your voices, without your hard work. Uh, we can't do very much, you see. Yeah. Well, I think we're, we're we're all in it together, aren't we? You know. Yeah. This, it's you fun. lead and we follow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I yeah. think we're, we're we're probably we're probably walking uh, we're walking the same path. I think you know ultimately, and I think getting um, I hope you know aiming for the same goal that we you know we will get there, which is that in a world in which. People are respected. Yes, you know, and 
dare I say, loved, <laughs> not just accepted, <laughs> but, but loved, you know, uh, regardless of their size, their physical appearance, whether it's, you know, whether it's skin color, whether it's, you know, size, the shape of their skin, <laughs> you know, yes. color of yes. their skin, uh, anything else, you know. Uh, yes. We can. Uh, yes, we can. Absolutely. <laughs> well, um, like uh, President Obama said. Yes. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> I, I caught that reference. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> well, that was uh, my conversation with Fatima Parker, uh, a uh, BBC uh, broadcast uh, journalist. And uh, she was speaking from London, but she's uh, normally... Uh, works out of Dubai, the Middle East, talking about the situation with size acceptance and uh, uh, the so-called war on obesity as it's uh, being manifested in the Middle East. Uh, You've been listening to the Health at Every Size show with Dr. Peggy Elam, and that's me. I'm a clinical psychologist in Nashville, Tennessee, and we're about out of time for today. So I'm going to take us out here with a selection from Beth Nielsen Chapman's PRISM CD, the Human Family Songbook that I thought might be appropriate for uh, today's session since we had the, uh, or excuse me, not session. <laughs> that was the psychologist and psychotherapist coming in with today's segment, <laughs> today's show, uh, dealing with the Middle East. Uh, at least it, it's one of the uh, uh, few songs I have with the Middle Eastern uh, theme here handy. This is, uh, it's actually, it's an, a hymn uh, that's, well, yeah, as you will see, it's sung in Farsi, which now uh, that is the language. It's Persian, the language of Iran, and et cetera, not uh, Arabic. Fatima actually speaks Arabic, but I don't have anything in Arabic. Uh, so uh, the words in uh, this song are actually an ancient text by Hafiz, which whom I believe is a Sufi uh, poet, uh, uh, writer and uh, Sufism, as you may know, is a the mystical branch of Islam. Anyway, this is Bad E Saba. Until next week, everyone, live large and love yourselves. <laughs> Oh